Today, AMD is launching their entry-level RDNA 2 graphics card, the 6500 XT. This is based on the new Navi 24 die and represents AMD's effort to bring to the current market a GPU at the $200 mark. Unlike the rest of the RDNA 2 GPUs, which are on 7 nanometer, AMD is using TSMC 6 nanometer for this 6500 XT, which for all intents and purposes is an improved version of 7 nanometer and not really a new node, but nevertheless, with the node improvements comes an impressive clock speed of up to 2.6 GHz sustained, the fastest clocks we've ever seen on a GPU at least sustained. But as you'll see, that doesn't necessarily translate to real-world performance. To achieve the $199 price point, AMD had to cut several corners, namely the VRAM, which is a MEGA 4GB of GDDR6 capable of 18 gigabit per second, so this is a new generation of memory, and also cut was the encode capabilities, which means that you can't use something like AMD Relive to capture clips and share with friends, unless you have a CPU that has an integrated GPU that can take up that mantle. Another corner cut was the display output, with only one HDMI 2.1 and one display port 1.4, so you can only plug in two monitors to this at once. Not a deal breaker for most, but it should be noted. The card supports H.264 and H.265 decoding, but not AV1, so if you are considering this for a home cinema type of build, bear that in mind. HDMI 2.1 with variable refresh rate is available, so pairing this with an OLED will work great for gaming at 1080p, and we'll look at performance numbers in a second. The card is also limited to PCIe Gen 4 times 4 so if your motherboard only supports PCIe Gen 3, I would stay away from this card as you will severely bottleneck the card and performance will drop significantly. It runs off a single 6-pin connector, sipping about 107 watts of power, with some leverage for overclocking as you'll see in a second, so the recommended power supply wattage to supply this card is at least 400 watts. AMD is positioning this as a 1080p medium settings card, and that's how I will test it, but we'll give it a run at Ultra just for funsies. Starting with Time Spy, we see the card scores 5384 points, which is just slightly above the previous generation 5500 XT, which came out with an MSRP of $169, so about the same level, but $30 more, is not an auspicious start for the 6500 XT. Overclocking the card gave it a small boost but nothing to write home about. Looking at actual games, we'll start with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. At 1080p medium settings, the 6500 XT performs about where you'd expect, just about edging out the 5500 XT, but when you consider that it's only a measly 3 frames ahead of the aging RX 580 from 5 years ago, the 6500 XT's performance here seems lackluster. I'm expecting the upcoming Nvidia RTX 3050 to land in the 2060 ballpark, so I've included the 2060 in these tests. It's on another tier, as you can see here. Where things fall apart is when you go over the 4GB VRAM buffer. Switching to 1080p Ultra sees the 6500 XT get buried behind the old RX 580 8GB model, so this really isn't a card that you can max graphics on, and texture quality is likely the first thing you'll have to sacrifice to get the maximum performance out of it, which is obviously not ideal. Next up is the newly launched God of War, a DX11 game. At 1080 the 6500 XT is performing on par with the RX 580 and 5500 XT using the high preset, which is the lowest in-game other than the original version. You'll notice I dusted off the old R9 290X from 2013, as I know a lot of people are still running GPUs from that period. Next up is Borderlands 3 in DX12 mode. Here, surprisingly, or perhaps not, the 6500 XT is actually behind the the RX 580. The 5500 XT is also in the same range, so perhaps this game just favors the compute capabilities of Polaris. Still, it's worrying that a $200 GPU in 2022 is slower than a mid-range GPU from 2017. In Cyberpunk 2077, at 1080p medium preset, the 6500 XT is again behind the RX 580 8GB, although by just 3 frames on average. 
I decided to test Fallout 76, a game that has seen a resurgence lately and again the 6500 XT is behind the aging RX 580 and by a significant margin the 6500 XT still held its own at a solid 75 FPS but I honestly expected more. In Far Cry 6, I actually saw a modest improvement when overclocking the card, so I'm including the overclock result here at 1 FPS on average, up from the 77 FPS non overclock result. Not a bad showing for a demanding and recent AAA game. The Rift Breaker has been a surprise hit, and here the 6500 XT is more than capable of handling it at medium settings, hitting 135 FPS, but note that again, the RX 580 still managed to beat it. And lastly we have Watch Dogs Legion, where the 6500 XT has a solid performance, with a minor improvement when overclocked at 75 FPS on average. It's one of the few games I tested where it had a clear lead over the RX RX 580. Before we move to the conclusion, just a brief look at temperatures. The model that AMD kindly sampled me with is the Dual Fan Gigabyte Eagle, and at idle the card hovered at around 55 degrees Celsius, while at full load it never went above 69 degrees after a 20 minute stress test. So what are my final thoughts on this card? I'll start with the pros, of which there aren't many. The card draws very little power and is therefore very quiet. That makes a solid consideration for a media PC build. This particular model I received for review is tiny and will fit into SFF cases without issue. As far as the performance is concerned, it's serviceable for what you are paying. AMD guaranteed me that there will be models available for the suggested ETL price of $199 in the US, and I spoke with a few AIBs who said that the MSRP will be maintained for at least for the first four to six weeks after launch. So we really are talking about a $200 GPU here, and given the current market where, for instance, the RX 588 GB that I tested here is currently going for $330 to $400 on eBay, the 6500 XT is not the worst deal ever. It's also nothing to write home about. I mean, a card in 2022 on 6nm that loses to the 14nm 580 from 2017 is never going to impress, but one has to evaluate properly products within the context of real world money, and if AMD's guarantee of stock for this card at MSRP is indeed true, then I would say the performance is acceptable at this price range, in the current market, I should stress that. If however you see this card selling for more than MSRP, then I would avoid getting one. It's just not worth it at that point. It's too little performance for say $300 or even $250 in my opinion. At $200 you can buy this now, it will get you by. You can even try ray tracing to see what the difference is with it on, although I wouldn't use it for actual gaming unless you like slideshows. And then when the market fixes itself, hopefully later this year or early next year, then you can sell this 6500 XT and upgrade when prices are less crazy and stock is plentiful. As far as negatives that I really need to point out, there's the 4GB of VRAM, which is a real limitation in today's AAA games. If it weren't for the market being as bad as it is, then there's no way I would recommend a 4GB card in 2022. Also, the two display outputs can be very limiting, especially for those just looking for an affordable GPU to use for work, where multiple displays are common. And finally, no video encoding really boggles the mind in an age where most gamers like to record and share clips with friends and online. This is a card that will especially be of interest to those who play esports titles, and not having the ability to use Relive is just silly. I really can't believe AMD has decided to remove encoding from the card, that's just a short-sighted decision in my opinion. I will try and include some links in the video description to places selling the card at MSRP, and let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on this card. If you like independent reviews, then consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Cortex. By doing so, you will also gain exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server, where you can talk to me directly. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.